there. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever traveled to the kingdom of dreamland? Lots of yeses, Bear. Many are saying they're in dreamland every night when they're asleep. Well, right now, Noah's taking off to dreamland, where the king wants him to fight a dragon who's setting dreamland on fire. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Noah will obey the king and slay the fire-breathing dragon. Noah in Dreamland by Alana George. I jump into bed as my mom dims the light. She picks out a book as I smile with delight. She tucks in the blanket beneath my cold toes and starts to read, but my eyes slowly close. Dream of aqua blue water and beaches with sand. Good night, little Noah. I'll see you in dreamland. My eyes feel quite heavy as I drift off to sleep. When suddenly I hear a strange kind of creak. My eyes fly open and to the left of the door, my rocking chair is rising right off of the floor. Not wasting a second, I leap onto the chair and suddenly realize I'm up in the air. Take me to dreamland, I order out loud and fly out of my window and straight through a cloud past shimmering stars and beyond the white moon, when suddenly my chair and I land with a boom. And before I have time to look around, a funny old man in a red robe and crown says, Noah, young man, we've been waiting for you. In fact, your visit is long overdue. We need your help. Dreamland has some trouble. Follow me, Noah. Hop, skip on the double. I say to the king, you've been waiting for me? And you need my help? Whatever can it be? There's a terrible dragon who is burning our city. We've begged him to stop, but he will not take pity. I loudly gasp, but what can I do? You will slay the dragon. We're counting on you. So I follow the king and he hands me a sword and a silvery shield that is hard as a board. The dragon's this way. The king gives me a poke. You really can't miss him. Just follow the smoke. So I follow his orders and trek through the town looking for embers fiery red and burnt brown. And that's when I see him, almighty and giant. I pull out my sword. He seems quite defiant. Oh, please don't hurt me, the big dragon pled. His nose was quite runny and stuffy and red. I'm feeling quite sick and don't mean to sneeze flames. It turns out that I just have 
terrible aim. I'd never hurt Dreamland or anger the throne. I do love this kingdom. This kingdom's my home. So I stood for a moment and had a quick thought. This dragon did not need to be fought. I ran to the castle and ordered some tea and a big bowl of soup, super hot and spicy. I brought it straight over to the poor sickly dragon who gulped it right down as fast as you can imagine. I did not mean to scare you. I felt awfully blue. It appears, said the dragon, that I just had the flu. All hail Noah, the king loudly did shout, for saving our kingdom and helping us out. Then the king took my hand and gave me his crown to the new king of Dreamland. You saved the whole town. I smiled and thanked him, but twas time to go home, and I asked the dragon to watch over the throne. Will I see you tomorrow? I heard the dragon say. Yes, and got in my rocking chair and flew far away. Now safely back home with the crown on my chair, I snuggled in bed with my soft teddy bear and dreamt of aqua blue water and beaches with sand and the exciting adventure I had in dreamland. Bear's wondering, how did Noah find out the dragon didn't mean to burn dreamland? Hmm. Many are saying Noah listened to the dragon explain his story. So Bear's asking, what do you think kings should do first? Listen to the whole story or fight? Most say listen. Well, what do you think King Noah will do? Hmm. Well, Bear's hoping you come back soon for more adventures in getting the whole story. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever wanted to go out in the moonlight on a winter adventure? Many brave yeses, Bear. Well, Bear's asking if you would walk quietly along with him into the snowy woods to find a great horned owl. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and go on an owling adventure. Sometimes you find one, sometimes you don't. Ready? Let's go. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train. 
And then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky. And Pa held up his hand. I stopped, right where I was, and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, "Who, who, 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 who." The sound of a great horned owl. Who, 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 who. Again he called out, and then again. After each call, he was silent, and for a moment we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, "Sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't." We walked on. I could feel the cold, as if someone's icy hand was palm down on my back, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf, over my mouth, and listened hard. And then Pa called, "Who, who, 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 who?" I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt. And my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. 
Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, Hoo, 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 just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words, or warm, or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining Owl Moon. Bear's wondering, were you hoping you'd see a great horned owl? Yes? Did you ever think you might stop hoping and turn around? Sometimes? Well, Bear wonders why you kept going. Hmm. Many say they wanted to find one so much, Bear. Well, Bear's glad you never gave up hope because we finally found the owl. Bear's also hoping you come back soon for more adventures in staying hopeful. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think it would be fun for a bear to try being some other kind of animal? Some yeses and some noes, Bear. <laughs> well, what if he tried being something with wings? Hmm. Well, this brown bear is really tired of all the things bears do. He wants to try being someone else. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what animal bear wants to be and what will happen. Bear and Duck by Katie Hudson. Bear was a bear, and in most ways, he was just like any other bear. He was big and furry, he slept all winter, and he ate lots and lots of honey. 
But in one big way, Bear was not like other bears. Bear's problem was that he wished he weren't a bear at all. He was tired of sleeping all winter. His fur felt hot in the summer. And he was sick of all the angry bees. Leave me alone, he growled, rubbing his sore stung nose. That's it, Bear decided. I am done being a bear. Just then, Bear heard a noise. A happy, I don't sleep all winter or have hot fur or bees stinging my nose kind of noise. Quack! The sound was music to his ears. So Bear slipped into the line of happy yellow ducks. Quack! He chimed in. He watched the ducks every move. Yes, he could get used to being a duck. In fact, he decided, he was a good duck. Luckily, no one noticed the new duck until Bear let out a too loud and happy quack. Stop right there, Bear. What are you doing in our line? snapped Duck. You don't belong here. But please, said Bear, I don't want to be a bear anymore. Can you please teach me how to be a duck? Please? Well, all right, said Duck. I guess I can help. How to be a duck. Rule one. Nest building. Step one. Collect twigs and old leaves. Step two. Build nest. Step three. Place egg in nest. Sit on egg. Keep egg safe and warm. Step four. Under no circumstances should you lose your egg. How to be a duck, rule two, swimming. Step one, waddle into water. Step two, flap feet one at a time to swim. Step three, no splashing permitted. <laughs> How to be a duck, rule three, flying. Step one, find perfect hill for takeoff. Step two, run while flapping wings and keeping beak pointed upward. Step three, once in the air, crash. Oh dear. This was definitely not going as planned. Bear wasn't good at being a duck after all. Duck felt sorry for Bear. Don't be sad, Bear. Look, you climbed a tree. Ducks can't do that. Bear felt a little better. He decided to climb up and get that apple for Duck. The apple was very high and the branch was very bendy. Bear reached as far as he could when...
Boing! I'm flying! Bear called out happily. Just like a duck! But inside, Bear wasn't actually happy at all. Flying twisted his tummy. And the landing was far too tricky. Crash! I think I prefer climbing, he told Duck. Being a bear doesn't seem all that bad, said Duck. And you make a really good bear. And a really good friend. Bear's wondering, would you want to be a polar bear? Hmm, some say no. They'd be too cold, Bear. <laughs> well, Bear says he's going to try being either a brown or black bear and raid beehives. Hmm. Well, are you hoping Bear will just stay a good reader and a really good friend? Bear's also hoping you come back soon for more adventures in learning how to be happy. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. What kind of valentine would you give to your cat or dog or to your family or even to your teddy bear? Hmm. Bear needs some ideas. Well, this boy is coming up with all sorts of new ideas for Valentine's and they're not always a card. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what Valentine's he's going to give. If You'll Be My Valentine by Cynthia Ryland If you'll be my Valentine, I'll kiss you on the nose. I'll scratch your ears and rub your head and pet your little toes. If you'll be my valentine, I'll give you extra treaties. I'll give you two and maybe three and let you lick my feeties. If you'll be my valentine, I'll take you on a walk. I'll pull the wagon just for you, and we can sing and talk. If you'll be my valentine, I'll write a special letter. I'll add some hugs and kisses too, to make it even better. If you'll be my valentine, I'll sit with you today. We'll read a book about some frogs, if you don't want to play. If you'll be my valentine, I'll take you in my car. You'll sit up front so you can look, but we won't go too far. If you'll be my valentine, I'll sing a song for you. And when you fly up in the sky, then you can sing one too. If 
If you'll be my Valentine, I'll pour our tea at three. Spicy cookies and an orange, just for you and me. If you'll be my Valentine, I'll make you funny faces. You can make them back at me when we go different places. If you'll be my Valentine, then I'll be one for you. We'll love the trees and all the world. We'll love each other too. Happy Valentine's Day. Bear's wondering, did you get some ideas for your Valentines? A lot of yeses, Bear. Well, Bear liked the way the boy took his teddy bear for a ride. <laughs> Do you think a Valentine always has to be a card? Lots of no's. Now Bear's asking, can a Valentine just be your own way of showing love? Hmm. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more Valentine adventures. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think it would be fun for a bear to try being some other kind of animal? Some yeses and some noes, Bear. <laughs> well, what if he tried being something with wings? Hmm. Well, this brown bear is really tired of all the things bears do. He wants to try being someone else. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what animal bear wants to be and what will happen. Bear and Duck by Katie Hudson. Bear was a bear, and in most ways, he was just like any other bear. He was big and furry, he slept all winter, and he ate lots and lots of honey. But in one big way, Bear was not like other bears. Bear's problem was that he wished he weren't a bear at all. He was tired of sleeping all winter. His fur felt hot in the summer. And he was sick of all the angry bees. Leave me alone, he growled, rubbing his sore stung nose. That's it, Bear decided. I am done being a bear. Just then, Bear heard a noise. A happy, I don't sleep all winter, or have hot fur, or bees stinging my nose kind of noise. Quack! The sound was music to his ears. So Bear slipped into the line of happy yellow ducks. Quack, he chimed in. He watched the ducks every move. Yes, he could get used to being a duck. In fact, he decided, he was a good duck. Luckily, no one noticed the new duck until 
bear let out a too loud and happy quack. Stop right there, bear. What are you doing in our line? Snapped Duck. You don't belong here. But please, said Bear, I don't want to be a bear anymore. Can you please teach me how to be a duck? Please? Well, all right, said Duck. I guess I can help. How to be a duck. Rule one. Nest building. Step one. Collect twigs and old leaves. Step two. Build nest. Step three. Place egg in nest. Sit on egg. Keep egg safe and warm. Step four. Under no circumstances should you lose your egg. How to be a duck, rule two. Swimming. Step one. Waddle into water. Step two. Flap feet, one at a time to swim. Step three. No splashing permitted. <laughs> How to be a duck, rule three. Flying. Step one. Find perfect hill for takeoff. Step two. Run while flapping wings and keeping beak pointed upward. Step three. Once in the air, crash! Oh dear. This was definitely not going as planned. Bear wasn't good at being a duck after all. Duck felt sorry for Bear. Don't be sad, Bear. Look, you climbed a tree. Ducks can't do that. Bear felt a little better. He decided to climb up and get that apple for Duck. The apple was very high and the branch was very bendy. Bear reached as far as he could when... Boing! I'm flying! Bear called out happily, just like a duck! But inside, Bear wasn't actually happy at all. Flying twisted his tummy, and the landing was far too tricky. Crash! I think I prefer climbing, he told Duck. Being a bear doesn't seem all that bad, said Duck. And you make a really good bear. And a really good friend. Bear's wondering, would you want to be a polar bear? Hmm, some say no. They'd be too cold, Bear. <laughs> well, Bear says he's going to try being either a brown or black bear and raid beehives. Hmm, well, are you hoping Bear will just stay a good reader and a really good friend? Bear's also hoping you come back soon for more adventures in learning how to be happy. 
Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever had to solve the mystery of where you lost something? Like your other sock? <laughs> Bear thought so. Well, Annie and her dog Oscar need to solve the mystery of where Annie lost her other red mitten. Bear's asking if you will come and help us look for clues. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and solve this mitten mystery. Here we go. The Missing Mitten Mystery by Stephen Kellogg. Oscar. I lost my other mitten. That makes five mittens this winter. I'm in big trouble. Let's search every place we played today. We'll start at the hill where we rode on Ralph's sled. Here's Ralph's boot, but there's no mitten. I'll look around the castles we built with Ralph and Herbie and Ruth. That was fun. Here's Ralph's other boot and Ruth's sock and Herbie's sweater. But no mitten. Oscar, you found it. Wow! A flying mitten! Oh, it's only a little bird. I wonder if he stole my mitten to make a snuggly nest. No, he's too small to carry off a mitten. But an eagle could do it. Maybe an eagle took my mitten to keep his baby's head warm. Do you think my mitten got tired of being a mitten? Maybe it just slipped off my hand and hopped away. There are no mitten tracks, but here are some mouse tracks heading toward the wood pile. Could that mouse be using my mitten for a sleeping bag? Or maybe he'll wear it next Halloween and be a mitten mummy. Let's go see if I dropped my mitten while we were making the snowman to surprise Mrs. Seltzer. I haven't seen your mitten, Annie, but why don't you look in the garden where you were making snow angels? Finding missing mittens is hard work. It would be easier to grow new ones. Let's try planting the other mitten right here in the garden. Next spring, when the snow melts, a little mitten tree might sprout. Miss Seltzer and I would take good care of it all summer long. In the fall, we'd pick the ripe mittens. Then I'd give mittens on Christmas. and mittens on birthdays. 
and mittens on Valentine's Day. Oscar, it's getting dark and it's starting to rain. We'll never find that mitten. Come inside, Annie. I made some hot chocolate for us. And I've got a biscuit for Oscar. Look! The rain is melting the snowman. But what's that spot on his chest? Gracious! Your snowman has a heart! My mitten is the heart of the snowman. Bear's wondering, do you think solving mysteries can be hard work? <laughs> yes. Do you also think it can be fun work? Yes, sometimes, if you're not in a hurry. <laughs> well, Bear also wonders if you ever guessed that we discover Annie's red mitten as the red heart of the snowman. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in solving important mysteries. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Would you close your eyes for a moment and imagine what it might be like to not be able to see or hear? Now open them. Would you try to have fun anyway? Hmm, many say it would be harder to have fun, Bear. Well, Margo the Poodle can see and hear now, and she's having amazing fun. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Margo can still have amazing adventures if suddenly everything changes. Yay, Margo! By Laura and Scott Jordan. I am Margo! I am a standard poodle, but there is nothing standard about me. I live at the marvelous and magical Poodle Resort and Spa with my really fun family. I can't wait for you to meet them. There's Mommy and Daddy. My sisters, Lucy, Chloe, Susie, and Rhonda. And our big brother, Wolfgang the Cat. Grandmama and Grandpapa live on the other side of our moat. I run across the bridge whenever I want to visit them. The Poodle Resort and Spa is so much fun. There are trails where we hike and bike, a tennis court for chasing balls, and a golf course with lots of grass and sand. We have a sunshine deck on our roof. It has a twisty slide we ride all the way down to the moat. Do you like my snazzy bathing suit? I wear it when we swim and ride boats in the moat. When it gets cold, the moat freezes and we ice skate. I decorated my skates 
with pom poms, just like the one on my tail. For most of my life, I was like any dog. I ran. I played. I ate. I snoozed. But a few years ago, everything changed. I got sick with a very rare disease. I am all better now, but the disease made me blind and deaf. That means I cannot see or hear anything. It was scary at first. I had to learn to do everything differently. I worked really hard. And I had to practice, practice, practice. But guess what? I discovered that I can do anything. The other day, Chloe and I were playing in Grandpa Pa's butterfly garden. That's when the caterpillars hatched. It tickles! I squealed. Grinning from ear to ear, Margot cannot see them, but she can feel how tiny they are. Grandpa Pa said. He put another baby caterpillar on my tummy. Their itty bitty legs made me giggle and giggle. A butterfly landed on my nose. Got it, Chloe said, snapping my photograph. I didn't think it was possible," Grandpapa said. But Marco's grin just got bigger. I guess Grandpapa could not smell the cinnamon yet. That's the real reason my grin grew. When my eyes and ears stopped working, my sniffer got super duper strong. I smelled the cinnamon. All the way from Grandma Ma's kitchen, the smell got closer. Chloe's sniffer twitched. "I'm getting hungry," she said. Just then, Grandma Ma came outside. She had a plate of cinnamon cookie bones. Yummy, delicious. Chloe and I circled her legs, our sniffers in the air, and our pom pom tails wagging to and fro. Grandma Ma laughed. I just took these out of the oven. They need to cool. Round up your sisters and meet us at your house. They'll be ready to eat when you get there. I sniffed the air and smelled Susie and Rhonda. To the golf course! I barked. Chloe and I ran to get our little sisters. Kaboom! I tripped and flipped and fell in the sand trap. Our castle! Susie cried. Oh no! You wrecked our castle! Rhonda wailed. I'm sorry," I said, shaking the sand from my blonde curls. "It was an accident. I will help fix it." Rhonda put her nose in my face. "Go away," she said. "You ruined it." Chloe pushed between us. "Margot is blind," Chloe growled. "She could not see your silly castle." Castle is not silly," Rhonda said, stomping her paws. "Not silly, not silly, not silly." "What's wrong?" Lucy asked. She was out of breath from running. "I heard you all the way at the tennis court. Did somebody get hurt?" "Our castle got hurt," Susie said. "Margot crashed into it." Rhonda howled. She ruined it. We can fix it, Lucy said, picking up a shovel. The castle is so pretty. 
I love how you decorated it with the necklaces Grandpapa made for you. I felt the rumble of thunder far, far away. I knew it would scare my sisters when it got closer. I did not want them to be afraid. So I said, let's go home. Grandmama made yummy, delicious cookie bones for us. My sisters screamed. Chloe shivered and said, Margo, you are so lucky you cannot see the lightning. It looks like a giant spider web. Crash! I felt the thunder boom from my top knot to my toes. Run! Chloe yelled. We raced home. My sisters ran fast because they were scared. I ran faster because I wanted a cookie bone. Mommy and Daddy met us at the back door with lots of towels. Oh no! Susie screeched. We forgot our necklaces. You can get them after the storm, Chloe said. No! Rhonda cried. We need them now. Do you want to wear mine? asked Lucy. Grandpapa made it too. No! Rhonda wailed. It says Lucy. My necklace says Rhonda. I threw down my towel. I am not afraid, I said. I will get the necklaces. My family watched in awe as I ran out the door. I used to be afraid of thunder. I knew it was just noise and could not hurt me, but I still hid under the bed. Now that I am deaf, I like the vibrations thunder makes. It feels like music and makes me want to dance. I jumped and twirled through the wet grass. When I smelled the sand trap, I slowed down. I did not want to crash into their castle again. My sniffer found the necklaces. I put them on and ran home. Bow wowie kazowie, I sang diving through the poodle door. Margo, you are decorated like a Christmas tree. Daddy teased when he saw all the necklaces I was wearing. I shook the water from my hair and sprayed Wolfgang the cat. Knock it off, Blondie, he hissed. That made my sisters giggle. Everyone cheered. Yay, Margo! You saved the day! Susie and Rhonda pounced on me and gave me lots of kisses. I'm sorry I was mean, Rhonda said. When I get big, I want to be like Margo. Chloe blew into her trumpet. Ta-da, ta-da! She announced cookie bones for the awesome and amazing Margot. Yummy, delicious. I am Margot. M-A-R-G-A-U-X. I'm 13 years old and I'm blind and deaf. But don't ever feel sad or sorry for me. I still have more fun than any and everybody. Bear's wondering, do you think Margot had to be brave to have fun? Hmm. Well, did Margot have fun being her sister's superhero in the storm? Many yeses. Bear's also asking if you think her sisters can be heroes by being patient with Margot. More yeses, Bear. Well, Bear hopes whenever you hear thunder, you'll remember how it made Margot feel like 
dancing instead of hiding. And that you come back soon for more brave adventures in being the best you can be. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever wished you could get your body to do what you see others doing? Lots of yeses, Bear. Some say they wish they could balance on a bike or kick a ball really far. Well. Pint-sized penguin Pete is watching others and trying very hard to do amazing things too. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what Pete will do. Penguin Pete by Marcus Pfister. Once upon a time, there was a colony of penguins living happily together in the Antarctic. The youngest penguin was called Pete. He was so small that the other penguins called him pint-sized Pete. Don't worry, said Pete's mother. All penguins are pint-sized when they're young. One day, you'll grow bigger, and then you'll be able to swim in the sea with the rest of us. Pete thought the grown-up penguins looked beautiful swimming in the sea. He wanted to grow up fast so he could join them. But when the penguins came back in the evening and waddled clumsily to their nesting places, Pete couldn't help laughing. <laughs> they looked so funny. Grown-up penguins couldn't move about on snow and ice any better than pint-sized Pete. I'll show them a penguin can move gracefully on land, said Pete to himself. And he began practicing flipper skating every day. It was great fun. He slid about all over the ice and usually ended up on the ground with a thump. Now and then, some of the other penguins who were Pete's friends stayed home with him. Then they had a wonderful time playing hide and seek, making snow penguins, and having snowball fights. The time flew by. One day, a flock of birds landed on the patch of ice where the penguins lived, calling and screeching and flapping their wings. Pete marched proudly through the rows of birds. How tiny they were! He felt very big and grown up. Hello, said one of the little birds. What kind of funny bird are you? I'm a penguin, he said. My name's Pete. Pleased to meet you, Pete, said the little bird. My name's Steve. Let's have a flying race. Don't be silly, said Pete. I can't fly. Then it's time you learned, said Steve. All you have to do is flap your wings hard. Just watch me. It's quite easy. Pete tried and tried to fly, but he couldn't. He could only jump a little way into the air. Pete and Steve were soon great friends, even if they couldn't go flying together. But Pete wanted nothing better than to fly with his friend. 
Although he tried to take off over and over again, his flights always ended in a crash landing. The day came when the flock of birds had to move on. There was nothing Steve could do about it. As the two friends said goodbye, big penguin tears trickled down Pete's cheeks. Never mind, Pete, Steve called back as he flew away. I'm sure we'll be landing on this patch of ice again next year. Pete was very sad, but his mother knew how to cheer him up. The next morning, he was allowed to go swimming in the sea for the first time. He was very excited, though the thought of diving into the water head first was rather scary. But Pete found two ledges of ice at the water's edge. He climbed cautiously down the ledges and slid backwards into the sea. I'll do a proper dive tomorrow, thought Pete. Pete's first few strokes were rather clumsy, but soon he was gliding through the cold water like an eel. He could even do a backstroke. He came in last in most of the swimming races and he lost when the penguins played games. But Pete was a good loser. He never tired of looking at all the fish and seaweed. There was something new around the corner of every rock. What a wonderful, mysterious place the sea was. The moon had risen by the time Pete waddled happily back to his mother. He felt far too tired to tell her about all his adventures, but that could wait until tomorrow. He fell asleep at once and dreamed of Steve, the sea, and the dive he was going to do next day. Bear's wondering, do you think Pete will ever be able to use his flippers to fly? Nose Bear, <laughs> they say his flippers won't fly up. Well, will Steve be able to use his wings to swim underwater? Nose Bear, they say bird's wings won't fly down underwater. So, now Bear's asking, do you think Pete and Steve will always have something different to tell each other about? Well, Bear's hoping you come back soon for more adventures in finding out what you do best. Bye for now. Please subscribe. Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Have you ever wanted a group of kids to let you play with them? Some are saying yes, Bear. Did you hope they would like you? Yes. Well, this little raven really wants to play with the other ravens in the group. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see what he will have to do to be part of their group. The Little Moon Raven by Marcus Pfister. Three old ravens perched on their branch, completely and utterly bored. 
Nothing happens here, croaked the first. Nothing has ever happened here, groaned the second. Not true, not true, protested the third. Have you forgotten the little raven with the silver wings? Silver wings? He only had silver wings in your dream. You've forgotten. And so the old raven began to tell the story. All the new little ravens in our flock had hatched, except one. But soon this last egg started to crack. And in no time at all, a tiny little something poked its hungry little beak out. After a few days, we gathered around the nest to have a look at the newcomer. Oh my, it's so puny, I said and laughed. Ten of that could fit into one egg, said another. And that will grow into a raven, croaked a third. The little raven really was incredibly small. Maybe that's why we started picking on him and bullying him whenever we could. He wanted to play with us, but we never wanted him. Why, you hardly have feathers, and you can't even fly yet. I told him once. We were really mean to him. The little raven's black feathers began to grow and get thicker. He was ready for his first flying exercises. He started with a clumsy flutter of his wings. This was followed by his first hop from a branch. And then his flights got longer and longer. He was gifted and agile, and soon became the best flyer in our flock. Can I play with you now? The little raven asked us one day. Of course, I said. You just have to fly up to the moon, and when you come back, we will play with you. To the moon? asked the little raven nervously. There's nothing to it, I said. We used to do it every day when we were your age, said the other crows, cawing happily. That evening, I watched the little raven staring up at the bright silvery moon. Suddenly, he took off. He flew higher and higher. I should have stopped him. I should have told him it was a bad joke. But I said nothing. I fell asleep, but in my dream I saw him flying still higher, the beating of his little heart thundering in my ears. When he was close to the moon, a harsh, blinding light lit up the sky. It took a moment before I could see clearly, but then I saw him. He was gliding high above, his wings glittering silvery and as bright as the moon itself. Then he began to lose power. The beautiful silver wings were probably too heavy. They seemed to pull him down and he rolled and spun towards the earth. I opened my beak to scream, but then his heavy silver wings caught the wind above me. I woke up completely confused and could not sleep a wink for the rest of the night. The next morning we found the little raven. He was lying in a hedge close to our oak tree. I was sure he had come closer to the moon than any other bird. The little one had the heart of a real fighter, but now he lay there lifeless. We all leaned over him 
and waited for some sign of life. His mother sobbed quietly, and I was afraid. Then the little raven suddenly opened his eyes. His mom hugged him, and the little one said very softly, I didn't make it. No one except me understood what he meant, and I knew exactly. We didn't make it either, I stammered. I told you that just to get rid of you. I never thought that you would really try to fly to the moon. Can you ever forgive me? Instead of answering, the little raven rose into the air and called, Come on, let's play! It was only then that we noticed the silver feather shining in the little raven's wing. Together, we followed him up into the bright, clear morning sky. Bears wondering, do you think it was important for the old raven to ask little raven to forgive him? Yes. Was he a bully? Yes, Bear. All the old ravens were bullies. So when little raven said, come on, let's play, do you think he showed he could forgive them? Yes, sis. Well, Bear thinks Little Raven was a hero for many reasons. Do you agree? Bear also hopes you come back soon for more adventures in being the best you can be. Bye for now. Please subscribe. You found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and this is our friend Bear, who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. Do you think you could sleep through a party? Most say no, Bear. <laughs> they say their friends are too noisy. Well, Bear's saying he'd like you to meet his big brown bear friend in the woods who is snoring in his cave while friends keep coming over with fun party ideas. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Bear's big brown friend will wake up. Bear Snores On by Karma Wilson. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap, with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day, he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl, and the night sounds growl. But the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter patter, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pip-pop, and the wind doesn't stop. But the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. Ho, oh, mouse, says hare. Long time no see. So they pop white corn 
and they brew black tea. Mouse sips wee slurps. Hare burps big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums. Perhaps we can share. I've brought honey nuts. Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, "What a night! What a storm!" twitters wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons stew. Then a small pepper fleck makes the bear rachu. He blows and he sneezes, and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair, and you've all had fun. But me, I was sleeping, and I have had none. And he whimpers, and he moans. He wails and he groans, and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks. Don't fret, don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn. We can brew more tea. Bear gulps. Bear gobbles. He sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tales through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, Bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. Bear's wondering, do you think that? Big brown bear will have a party by himself now. Lots of no's. Well, bear wants you to tell him what you think his big brown bear friend should do now. Hmm. Bear also hopes you come back soon for more winter adventures with friends. Bye for now. Please subscribe.